We have come to the town of Bethlehem, to the place where Jesus was born. Let us remember Bethlehem, Beit Lehem, the house of bread, or in Arabic, Beit Lahem, the house of meat. In the New Testament, we have only one verse that tells us explicitly about the birth of Jesus. Let us hear once again that verse, and we will look at it in detail, for it tells us a lot about the child who will become a man, who is the Messiah and the Son of God. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. This verse is the unique witness we have to the birth of Jesus, but it tells us a lot more than just about the birth of Jesus. Let us look at this verse in some detail. So the image at the very center of the verse should take us by surprise a baby in a manger. Of course, we know that a manger is not a place where you lay a baby. A manger is a place where you put food, food for animals. Yes, the small baby Jesus is laid by his mother in a manger, a place for food. And Luke tells us as well in this wonderful verse, the reason for laying the baby in a manger. The reason is because there was no place for them in the inn. In the English language, we use the word inn to translate a Greek word that is katalima. Luke uses that word only twice in all that he wrote. Luke indeed wrote 24 chapters that make up the Gospel of Luke and 28 chapters that make up the book of the Acts of the Apostles and only twice does he use this word, katalima. I'm sure it is very important to identify the other place where this word is used. If we advance in the story of the life of Jesus and we come to chapter 22, it is the time of Passover, and Jesus sends two disciples into the city to find the place where he will celebrate the Passover, where he will eat the Passover meal with his disciples. In chapter 22, verse 11, Jesus says to his disciples, Go into the city and find the master of the house and ask him, where is the katalima that has been prepared for the celebration of Passover? This, of course, creates a very important link between the place where there is no place for Jesus when he is born and the place where, toward the end of his life, the last evening that he will have to celebrate with his disciples, it's the same word, katalima. It is in the katalima that he will take the bread and say, this is my body. He will take the cup and say, this is my blood. No place when he is born. And so he is placed in a manger. A manger, a place for food. And at the end of his life, in the katalima, he will give for the world his body and blood as food. Let us now look at the prophetic actions of his mother Mary. Let us remember that Mary is the name of a prophetess in the Old Testament, the sister of Moses. And here the new Mary comes and does three prophetic acts. 
she gives birth. She wraps the child in bands of cloth and she lays that child in a manger. Once again, it is interesting to note that the rhythm of this verse, the three verbs, she gives birth. She wraps the child in cloth and lays the baby in a manger. Are followed, these three verbs, by a description of place, in fact, a negative description of place. There was no place for them in the Catalima. If once again we are transported years ahead, chapters ahead in the Gospel of Luke, we come to what happens after Jesus has died on the cross. Joseph of Arimathea enters on the scene. And in chapter 23, verse 53, Luke describes the actions of Joseph. He takes it down. The it here is the body of Jesus taking it down from the cross. He wraps it in a shroud and lays it in a tomb hewn into the rock in which no one has ever been laid. Have we noticed the same rhythm in these two verses, the verses that describe the entry of Jesus into the world and the exit of Jesus in his historical body from the world. Again, she, Mary, gave birth, wrapped, laid. He, Joseph of Arimathea, took it down, wrapped it, and laid it. And both times these three verbs are followed by a negative description of place. For the first, Mary's actions, she laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn, in the Catalima. And Joseph's actions, he laid Jesus in a tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Again, we notice that every verse of the gospel is pointing to who Jesus is. He is the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who dies and is resurrected. Let us notice finally that Jesus emerges from a womb in which there are no conditions for life, for that womb does not contain any male seed. Mary, his mother, is a virgin. And let us remember that the tomb also is a place where there is no life, but out of that tomb will emerge Jesus resurrected. For as Luke tells us at the beginning of his narrative, nothing is impossible for God.